when you learn to be with awareness more and more then it gets sharper and clearer then you can see the experience or even go beyond the experience to something different in this case the duality of the experiencer and the experienced dissolves into one another for ultimate experience of oneness this is what hindus call that there is only oneness but it is said that god and man are one before buddha all religious search was extrovert but with buddha the search became inner you are experiencing something you are the subject what you are experiencing is the object and the process between the two is something that is happening when you learn to be with awareness more and more you practice mindfulness when you are mindful of the small events happening around you you are not letting them happen mechanically just as you come home you put your key your belongings that you use while going outward just haphazardly absent mindedly then you are living in an unconscious moments if you are aware that you are putting your shoes in the right place your keys in the right place your umbrella your walking stick in the right place with these small events you are mindful of where your key is supposed to go where your umbrella is supposed to go where your hat is supposed to go where your jacket is supposed to go then through these small things your awareness becomes clearer and sharper then it happens that the gap between the experiencer and the experienced and the process between the two become one the duality disappears this means you are becoming one with awareness you are awareness itself not the person who is aware thus transcending this concept of the person you allow more and more in a restraint clarity and force you may call it personal because it is your ability to express an experience naturally with this ability you can remove any inhibitions and then allow the totality of the being to emerge without any interference it is important to be totally one with awareness at every moment in this state there is total non performance at the center of the being while on the surface there may be actions when this awareness remains like an undercurrent through the movement of your life it becomes a powerful tool which can deal with any problem that you might face or the negative energy this will allow you to go deeper into the experience very quickly and naturally to whenever there is willingness to give and be vulnerable the resistance naturally gets less effective before you come to this state of willingness there is bound to be some resistance this you can watch when you do not allow your resistance then you are faced with double flow a natural flow has to continue everything has to be allowed to flow naturally because each is a phenomena the sun the wind the rain what swear you can stop the wind from blowing it stops by itself and there is no condition for it to blow when you do not understand this process you try to get hold of everything you try to control such phenomena and all things within when you cannot do this then you feel incapable to deal with your conditions habits and your unlimited tendencies because they succeed in making you feel that you do not have any force in that case the inherent tendencies become powerful and begins 
to dominate. Then a question comes to the mind, how do personal force and inner strength come to us? Let me explain the process. The first thing that you have to do is allow yourself to be whoever you are. Second, be open to experience. Third, be willing to embrace anything that comes to you. Without any choice, embrace everything ugly and beautiful. If you develop that ability, then you develop force to meet any challenge and also to express yourself. This allows you more experience and also to make that experience known to oneself clearly. When you allow this without any intentions to do so, channels develop a free flow of personal force or energy. It provides inner strength to act and also cope with all that is happening. Then you have tremendous force and the further and for the first time you are yourself but there is no strong and solid identity to cling to there simply exists a strong feeling of being oneself and this satisfies the needs of identity as human beings all of us have a strong need for identity we are seeking our true identity the totality of being. This happens by its own. So you need not worry about losing the identity. All you need to do is to allow this inner force to flow more freely. This depends on the spiritual force and this implies all that is natural and spontaneous in life. You do not move with your conditionality. This means you are identified with a certain culture. When you are conditioned by the norms of the family or the society or a particular way of religion, then you have to act according to their demands. And in such case you cannot be yourself. When you conform to the dictates of the others, you lose your personal force and inner strength to act purely, genuinely and spontaneously. You lose this spontaneity and choice once you are conditioned. One can be conditioned in many ways, by way of religion, by way of the way society molds you. Once you are part of such condition, it becomes to work against such conditionings. Naturally, we do not work against these. Instead, we recognize their presence within and how they work within us. When you do not perform in ac accordance with these conditions, suddenly there opens the door to an indomitable force, clarity and awareness. For instance, Hindus consider the offering that is given to you in the temple as sacred and to deny that sweets or as it is called prashad is profane you are living with that condition you go to a mosque you have to offer your prayers in a particular way this is conditioning when you refuse to do that when i look at the food that is offered in the temples it is unhealthy for my life for my body. I refuse it. I am going against the conditionings and the social norms. And when you do this, suddenly there opens the door to an indomitable force, clarity and awareness. Something that is an unconditioned state. This makes you aware of your conditioning and also allows your unconditioned state to come to the surface. You do not break the conditionings by force or will. You simply allow them to be and be a witness every moment. Thus you allow the creative and healthy growth to come into operation more often. With this the conditioned state wither 
away naturally and gradually. So you have to keep on watching your old states and also allow the new states to develop and then actualize so that these come to the limelight and then act in our lives more and more. As an individual, we do get sometimes caught up with such condition, such conditionings attached to negativity. Thus, we do not allow new states to come and operate in our lives. Such a situation arises due to the lack of trust. By nature, we do not trust anything new. This is hereditary. Our first reaction to anything new is always negative and with this trust cannot arise. To everything new, our first reaction is always new. This starts at the time of our conception and continues until transformation happens. With this reaction, our conditionings get stronger and stronger, then we give up. As a result, the conditionings continue to pull and push us in a way. When you learn to flow with new understanding, new freedom and new insights and something new that is growing within, then certainly such things get stronger while the negativities wither away. These two processes work simultaneously.